General Physics 1 is brought to you by Physics Classroom. And our lesson is all about scalars and vectors. Assume you're standing in front of your home. Now if your best friend comes to tell you, there is a good store 20 kilometers away from home, how long will it take for you to go there? Which direction will you go? It could be here, or here, or maybe there. It is hard to know where exactly it is. You are only provided the distance which is one-dimensional information. One-dimensional information like this, is called a scalar quantity. Your question to her, would probably be, which direction from home? And then when you are told that is 20 kilometers, northeast direction, you have the precise information. This now becomes a two-dimensional information. The store is over there. Two-dimensional information like this, is called a vector quantity. Physical quantities can be classified as either vector or scalar. A vector quantity has both magnitude and direction, while a scalar quantity has magnitude only. Some examples of vectors and scalars are given below. A vector quantity is represented by an arrow. The length of the arrow, represents the scale of the vector's magnitude, and the head of the arrow, indicates the direction. The Cartesian plane is used, where arrows are drawn, to indicate the reference directions. East and west directions, on the horizontal axis, north and south directions, on the vertical axis. Figure 3.1, shows a vector that represents, a velocity of 30 meter per second east, where 30 meter per second is represented using a scale of 1 unit equals 10 meter per second, and whose direction is to the right, eastward. Figure 3.2, are other examples of vectors drawn in the Cartesian plane. Two or more vectors can be combined, to form a single vector called a resultant vector R. The resultant vector can be found by, using the graphical method, or by the component method. You can determine the resultant vector, by laying out vectors, drawn to scale. The tail of the second vector, must be drawn at the tip of the first vector. The resultant vector, points from the tail of the first vector, to the tip of the second vector. To find the resultant of vectors, in the same direction, find the sum of their magnitude, and follow their common direction. To find the resultant of vectors in the opposite directions, find the difference in their magnitudes and follow the direction of the vector with the greater magnitude. To find the resultant of vectors, in directions perpendicular to each other, use the Pythagorean theorem, to determine the magnitude, and utilize the tangent function, to determine the direction. To further understand how, study the given example.
Okay? That would be all for now. And the next is the second part of this lesson, finding the magnitude and directions of vectors, using the graphical method, and the component method. Again, thank you very much for exploring the lesson deliberately.